There's no reason for us to pay any attention to us. Basically, to them, they were just flee. They were nobody. Get out of here. Shoot them away. I don't know you. And they made a fool of them. The devil pays attention to who's attacking his kingdom. To those who are sitting in the pew, he may know enough to keep them there. He may know their weaknesses. But does he know them by name? Probably not. Whoever they are saying. There are a lot of people I see coming at work that expect me to know their name. I might remember faces, but I don't remember names. You make me angry, and you come against me. I'll know your name. I'll make sure I remember it, and when you come, I'll be sure to stay clear, because I ain't dealing with that mess again. The devil pays attention to those who are attacking his kingdom. And if you are going to be attacking the devil's kingdom, he's going to be attacking you. Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and the devil attacked him. And he was the Son of God. And if Jesus got attacked by the devil, how much more are we prone to get attacked? No one is safe from the enemy's attack. And when I say safe, I mean not limited, not exposed, or uh, not withdrawn. Not that we're not safe, because there's power greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. But no one is excluded. <clears throat> fasting is an extremely valuable and important facet of the Christian life, but it is not an infallible means of getting what you want from God. Sometimes you might pray for a want, <clears throat> well, let me put it this way, for a greed and not a need. It's one thing if you want to get a hold of God and you want to fast because you need a reliable reading. God said, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. But if you're that concerned about it and you want to get a hold of God, that's fine. If you're out there praying for a $2 million car and fasting for a $2 million car, that's an entirely different story. Don't expect God to give you a $2 million car if it's just a satisfied agreement. If you're praying that you might sell it for missions or something, that might be a little bit different. I'm not saying you're still going to get it, but we don't pray and fast for our greeds. We pray and fast for our needs. And to be honest, if we would all seriously just do one thing in the Bible, I think we'd have everything we ever want, need, granted, without even focusing on that. What does the Bible say about seeking the kingdom of God? Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. When we fast, I think if we would fast for the sole purpose of knowing God, who he is, that our spiritual ears would be open to his voice, that our spiritual eyes would be unblinded, We'd have so much of heaven unveiled to us, it's not even fun. We'd have everything in this world that we'd ever need, not want necessarily, but need, revealed to us. And in doing so, if knowing Jesus and getting close to God is our primary purpose, he said he'll give us the desires of our heart. If they're not grateful, he'd give us the desires of our heart. Where is the difference going to be? Where are we going to make a difference in this world when we pray and when we fast? If we're going to get serious about seeing revival, we need to pray and we need to fast. If we're ever going to get serious about seeing the strongholds and our community torn down, it's going to be when we pray and when we fast. Why is fasting important? Because we are talking about becoming a spiritual power. And what do we know about the demon world to a degree? There are some kind that don't come out but by prayer and fasting. You don't enter into the store hoping that someone's going to make a fool of you. You don't go out in public hoping that someone's going to make a fool of you. You'd be prepared. If you knew somebody was going to come against you, wouldn't you be prepared? Do everything in your power to avoid it. 
Jesus already made a fool of the enemy's kingdom. He made a show of principalities, power, and powers openly. What is that equivalent to? Basically, if you study on that verse, that's basically if you go back to the ancient kings when they would conquer a country and they would parade their prisoners naked through the streets, making a show of them. Making them look like fools. Having the chains around their necks, their hands, having them bound. Parading them for the entire city to see. That's basically what that verse means there. Jesus made a fool of the enemy in his kingdom. But we are still here. And there are plenty of Christians that sit in our church, or people with the title Christian, that call themselves Christian, that the enemy would make a fool of if they ever came against his kingdom. He's already did it once in Scripture. We just talked about it this morning in passing at least once. Seven sons of Sceva. They were religious. They were priests. Their daddy was the high priest. They knew the rules. They knew the rituals. They knew the sacrifices. But what did the devil tell them? Doesn't matter all your religious tradition. You have no power. All it is is tradition. You don't have a relationship with God. You don't have any power through the Holy Ghost. Jesus I know. Paul I know. But I'm about to swash you around like I'm going to a cat with a little house. We need to be somebody that the kingdom of hell will know and see as a potential force. Why? Because it is our duty to do the same as Jesus, to seek and save those that are lost, that they might obtain salvation. We need to be like those in the book of Jude, talking with fear those out of fire. Because this body is going to die. You are never going to die, though. Your spirit, your soul, is going to move on. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Probably nobody realizes and understands more than those involved with witchcraft that this is just a temporal body. That is all it is. But you are eternal. When we pray, when we fast, and we do it in a right manner, that's eternal. Those prayers are for eternity. Whether they're praying for someone that they might be saved, or whether we're praying for a certain need, whether we're praying for our community, whether we're praying and fasting for the stronghold of the enemy to come down, time will pass. Our spirit is not limited by time. Hell is not limited by time. Life is but a vapor. But everything after that is ongoing. We do not pray and fast for the temple. We pray and fast for eternity that we may win souls, and that the kingdom of God may grow. And when I say that, take it with the grace of all, because we do pray and fast for things that are important for us. But we don't do it, for, we don't pray and fast for our greed. We pray and fast for the needs, is what I'm getting at. Because we need to see God and know Him like never before. But as we become stronger and stronger in being a Pentecostal powerhouse, as our spirit becomes stronger, we will be attacked. But we need to fight back. As I've already said it, and we'll see as we go on, God's not just saved us, but he's given us weapons to do his will here on earth and keep pushing forward. For the sake of time, let's just close and bow our heads in prayer. I, I was thinking, though, look at all the prayers that went up during this, uh, when our president was voted in. They were by millions of prayers for us. And probably didn't come out of any faster. Mm -hmm. Because if they didn't pray and fast, the wrong person might have got it. I will also say this as a side note because we're almost five minutes already over. We need to make sure that we are praying and fasting according to God's will because God may answer some prayers and we don't want them answered even if we pray and fast. 
We need to be careful we've been in that area. But yes, God answers prayer and he takes notice. Let's just bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and shall continue to do. Lord, we thank you that you are God who reigns on high and there is none like you, Lord. Even right now, we rebuke every attack of the enemy that should come our way. We pray, Lord, that you set your angels at the four corners of the property, above and below, that no attack of the enemy may penetrate. I pray that our hearts and minds will be plowed, that they be good soil for your word to fall on, Lord, that we may uh, remember throughout the week, but even that we would take it to heart, Lord. Lord, may we all be challenged to become stronger spiritually, Lord, that we may know you like never before. Lord, that we may grow in the power of your resurrection, that we may do, know Jesus in the power of his resurrection, that we may do great exploits, not because of who we are, but because of who you are. And may we not do great exploits just because we want to see you move in my way and just see God, you display your power, but may we do it that your will may be fulfilled here on earth because we know it's all about souls, Lord. May we be challenged to know what it is to pray. May we know be challenged to know what it is to fast and get a hold of you like never before. May we be challenged to know your voice, that we have a daily talk with you, that we can hear your voice, and that our spiritual ears are even tuned into you, even when we're just going about our daily business, Lord, that when you speak, we hear. We pray, Lord, that you just anoint the pastor as he brings forth the word today, anoint his mind and his lips to bring forth your words. Anoint the song leader and the musicians as they praise you upon the string instruments and the vocal cords, Lord. As you give them the songs you have us to sing, Lord, give them a special blessing. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.